Hi guys, good morning. This is Dan. Welcome to Angle Guys. For those of you that are new, welcome. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. And for those of you that support me over on Patreon, thank you so very much for your support. I greatly appreciate it. Um, this here is your forecast for Thursday, the 3rd of September. It is a message for the greater collective for the highest good. Therefore, it is a timeless message. Whenever it's finding its way to you is... Um, when you're supposed to hear it. So if you're watching this on a day that's not the 3rd of September, that's okay. Um, and if this doesn't make any sense to you or doesn't sort of relate to your life or what's going on in it, that's okay too. It doesn't mean anything's wrong. Um, you just might be working on a different sort of um, trajectory. So uh, just take what you need and leave the rest kind of thing. So worry if they're like, oh my god, that makes no sense. Okay, so let's see what's going on for Thursday. Now, we should be in that full board three of cups energy from Sunday that we saw for the midweek card. I was thinking about that this morning while making coffee. You know, that three of cups doesn't now have to mean an actual physical reunion. It could be also us planning emotionally what it's going to be like to be able to reunion with those that we love or care about, those that we miss during this pandemic period, that sort of a thing. It could also be that energy, sort of the planning of the celebration of that and the joy that that will bring, and the focus, you know, that that might be what's kind of getting some of us through. That sort of flashed in my head, oh, while well, making coffee. So that could be underpinning some of your guys' thoughts or emotions right now is, oh, when this is all gonna, you know, when this is all over, it's gonna be so much better. And that's a powerful energy, right? I think that that's an actually beneficial um, focal point. So let's see what's going on in the cards. Okay, Ace of Swords. <laughs> Not the best of cards, but I am going to say, and this might be the reason why I had this sort of flash during coffee this morning, she feels a little stuck. Swords is the mental, you know, the air or the mental realm, right? The element of air is the, the our brain, our sort of thoughts, that kind of thing. And uh, with the Eight of Swords, to me, Eights always kind of bring about a sense of balance in the end, even if we have to struggle through them. And the Eight of Swords, I would say, is a little bit of a struggle. The thing with the Eight of Swords to me is it's usually like a sort of a self-induced struggle. This picture is slightly different than a more traditional Eight of Swords. There's a lot of very traditional imagery in it, but um, to me, the Eight of Swords is always this idea of being sort of bound up or tied to a situation, sometimes even stuck or feeling helpless, kind of trapped, that sort of a feeling. Uh, it's usually, you know, in our mind, but to me, it's always kind of like the trappings of the mind in the sense that we can always free ourselves in any, <clears throat> in any place in time. We have to kind of maybe find something better to focus on or find something with more hope, with more, you know, um, opportunity in it to sort of focus on that ultimately she has the opportunity to get out from being, she's sort of guarded by all of these swords around her, like almost like a fence, but there's always a spot where she can kind of go through and get out. She can kind of free herself. Uh, we can't necessarily see, she's always usually blindfolded in the Eight of Swords, and so we can't necessarily see the future. We are focused on the future. If you look at how her body is positioned and the way that she is turned, to me, she's focused on the future, but there might be a little bit of sadness. There might be a little bit of, uh, you know, um, reality may not sort of uh, align with sort of the hopes that we may want to have, right? That could be that Three of Cups energy underneath, right? Is that idea of emotional hope, uh, reunion, excitement, uh, being connected back to those that we love. And I think that sometimes we're able to tap into that and at other times maybe not. Maybe our mind tells us, oh no, this isn't going the way we planned, this isn't going to work. And so we have to work against that. This is kind of, you know, in some ways, and this could be like sort of maybe the dark night of the soul, like we have to go through some of our more darker thoughts to get to those sort of better feelings. And we have to kind of use those better feelings, even if they're not, you know, fully reality yet, 
uh, to bolster us during these times where we're maybe troubled, troubled mentally or we're struggling mentally. I do uh, think this, the Eight of Swords always has this opportunity to realize she's not as trapped as she thinks she is, right? This uh, card, though, is rather sad, I have to say, this depiction is a beautiful, forlorn sort of look. But we haven't given up complete hope because her body is, to me, twisted and turned towards the future. Although her head is down because she can't necessarily see, right? She doesn't feel as though she can see quite so clearly. That doesn't necessarily mean that the options aren't there. It doesn't mean that something new won't dawn on her or come to her. Uh, this could be as simple as, you know, some of us are just having a little bit more of a lower day, right? Where we're fighting against our own mind a little bit with judgments, restrictions, um, uh, you know, uh, like requirements we put upon ourselves that maybe don't feel quite so good. So keeping that in mind today, we might feel a little bit challenged slightly. And remember too, this full moon energy in Pisces is a great time to be releasing these things. So if there are thoughts that we're having that sort of keep us stuck or don't assist us in moving forward, now is the time to kind of work with them. We don't have to resist them or hate them or bash them, right? We don't want to do them sort of harm in a way. We want to kind of accept them, understand them, and then we can sort of transform them, work with them and change them. And that's kind of also the power of the Eight of Swords. And she's, that's how she sort of releases herself. It's by finding a new way to relate to maybe the way that her mind thinks or the way that she sees her situation. All right, so let's look at this. Oh, I love it. So another full moon card. And we're in that full moon energy. And it's the full moon in Leo. Don't let pride get in your way. So when I look at this, to me... And actually, it's interesting, too, because I was saying yesterday with that Page of Pentacles that this is a very, like, sort of glowy uh, uh, golden deck because the first few cards in the Pentacles suit was very golden-esque. This does not appear quite as golden to me. It's more blue. But then we have this golden energy of the full moon in Leo, which is kind of funny to me because we had the blue energy of um, full moon in Gemini and new moon in Gemini the last two days. So they kind of feel like they've switched color schemes, <laughs> the two cards. All right, so... Leo's are always, speaking of yesterday's grounding stone, which was generous, Leo's energy can be very gregarious, generous, um, abundant, loving. A full moon in Leo, to me, is very much about that, too. Uh, don't let pride get into your way. Uh, I don't feel like we feel very proud, to be honest. This Eight of Swords, to me, feels like we feel stuck or a little bit more. There could be shame, things of that nature. Um... Uh, maybe even slight depressions, things like that, that we might be dealing with just sort of like struggles that we are facing within ourselves that are sort of self-induced. And so when I'm looking at this, don't let pride get in your way or this full moon in Leo, there is an opportunity here for us to sort of release these things. That's what the full moon is about, is we've re released, we've gotten to that full sort of term and it's time to kind of let it go and, and start anew as the new moon comes, you know, as the moon dwindles down. We get to the new moon and then we create again. So to me, I feel like there is something here that we need to maybe look at. We need to see it for what it is. We need to be generous or kind to ourselves as we go through this process, protecting ourselves with the power of, say, that sign of Leo and, um, and being conscious of what it is that we're thinking or that we're doing that is um, possibly keeping us stuck or in, in, in the way of... Um, not being, feeling, you know, joyous or free, right? All of the grounding stones this week have been really positively minded. So um, keeping that in mind, remember that joy card, uh, that joy stone is supposed to be underpinning all of this. So we want to keep that um, uh, as a focus still, as a point to ground in is, is where is our joy. Even if we're not necessarily connected to it or fully feeling it with this Eight of Swords, we can get back there. We can refine it. So, uh, you know, if we've been sort of steered off course for a moment, the grounding stone for today is dream. So again, this is an opportunity to dream. What would it look like if we didn't feel stuck? What would it feel like if we had all of the power and the sort of energy of the sun or Leo, right? And that sort of, you know, king of the jungle attitude, that can-do attitude. What if we could do that or allow that to sort of take us forward? Um, 
I think that we can achieve our dreams or that we can at least pursue them or reconnect to them, ground within them and remember that, you know, not all is lost, that, you know, today might just be a temporary uh, uh, moment of um, uh, struggle, but um, it could also be an opportunity for us to find out where we are struggling or where we're vulnerable and work on those areas of say our mind, our thoughts, our beliefs, and utilize those things to sort of, sort of utilize this time to kind of release those things so that we can <clears throat> so that we can go about the pursuit of our dreams. All right, so let me read to the Eight of Swords really quick. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Eight of Swords, frustration and fear, feeling powerless and at the mercy of outside forces, the controlling behavior of others, unfair treatment upon not having the ability to ad adequately protect oneself, vulnerable to deceit, scapegoat, please falling on deaf ears, being misunderstood, being used, a temporary situation that will pass. And that's totally what I feel is that temporary situation that will pass. The thing with the Eight of Swords is she can always free herself and she just needs to realize that. She needs to understand that she's not completely surrounded. There's ways out of whatever it might be that we're dealing with, struggling with, feeling stuck by. And I do feel like we kind of are in touch with that because her body is still uh, sort of turned towards the future, which means to me that we haven't lost all hope yet. Now, let's get into a full moon in Leo. <clears throat> I like that we're seeing these full moons during this full moon energy. That's great. It's fucking great. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't let pride get in your way. Have you been letting your pride become an obstacle? Is the question you're being uh, is the question you're asked based on your ego or is it from your heart? Leo energy is all about the heart. Think of the big hearted king of the jungle, the lion. Its energy is magnificent, but when it's combined with the rush of the full moon, it can become over the top. This card may have to may have come to you because you need to end a deadlock that has developed. That could be the deadlock here in the Eight of Swords, guys. More love and thoughts for the greater good are the solution to this dilemma, and that would be the stone dream and joy from Sunday. If you're not, <clears throat> if you've not been doing as you would be done by lately, this is the time to find a balance between your own needs and the needs of the people around you. That would be yesterday's generosity stone also, guys. This will help all your relationships. Attune to the moon. Be magnificent without at being plain too much. Additional meanings for this card is self-esteem is good, vanity is not, everyone is equally important, creative urges should be uh, followed, work some magic, and a friendship may be ending now. That's random, okay? But whatever. Um, it says, when the full moon comes into Leo, it can be a wonderfully bright time where people feel more confident to show the world their talents and assets. That's the upside of this lunation and of this card, no matter when you pull it. However, take note that the full moon, the Leo full moon combination creates a sort of tension between your needs and the needs of people in your networks. Leo full moon is a time to release pride. Well, that's great, but I don't feel, I mean, maybe for some of you, pride is the issue. To me, I just feel like it could be outside influences or circumstances that we're giving more power to, or, um, you know, um, having a harder time seeing the bigger picture and the possibility that lies within ourselves to getting ourselves there. Does that make sense? Because I even also see this sort of vague path that leads through these swords. You know, it kind of winds her through the snow that she just can't see right now. And that's okay. I think that there's something that we maybe need to let go of. I don't know that it's necessarily pride to me in the sense it might be just, you know, that feeling of being stuck or wherever our mind works against us. Remember to dream. And remember that all of this stuff is, is, is um, you know, if anything, it's, it's temporary. It's cert certainly the feeling that I get with this Eight of Swords. Um, and that reunion card for some of you, you know, maybe the dream is, is when things get back to normal. You know, you hear that phrase quite a bit lately and a lot of us, I don't know that any of us can say whether it will or won't, right? But a lot of us still have that hope. So maybe we need to hold on to that right now and allow that to be our guide. Even though sometimes when we dwell in that dream, it might make us feel a little bit more stuck in the current situation because it's so far different from that dream. Don't lose hope though, guys. 
Thank you so much for tuning in, and this is your forecast for the day. I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you're thinking, and um, we will see what happens with tomorrow's energy. Have a great day. Bye-bye.